Greetings, dear friends. So glad you tuned into the broadcast today, and may the Lord bless you, strengthen you, and bring new life to you like you've never known or thought before. We're in Romans 7. I want to read the second verse of the seventh chapter of Romans. It says, For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Now, that's a, that's a good Christian thought. That's the way it is in Christianity. But that's not really all that Paul is talking about in this verse. He began this seventh chapter by saying that as long as a man lives, he's going to be bound under dominion to the law. So he's just carrying on on that same subject here. He's using an illustration of Christian marriage, what a Christian marriage is all about. And that, that's an issue that's gotten lost in our world today. It, it's lost. Uh, churches no longer practice that the way it is mentioned in that second verse. Hardly anybody religious practices that because everything's so broken down. Families are broken. People raised in Christian families have problems in life and they marry and remarry. They, they get behind all those things. They push them back. They don't believe quite like that anymore. And while that appears to be something that has to do with, with marriage, it's reaching a deeper point. That's what I want to get to. It's an illustration that a woman is bound by the law as long as he lives. How can she get free? She can only be free if it dies, if he dies, if he passes away. Well, that's another part of the Christian message. But that's not really what Paul is aimed at here. He's using that as an illustration that as long as a person has not been born again, he is bound by the law. Jesus himself said it, you must be born again. And as long as a person is not rebirthed, they're still under the law. Look at it closely now. When you became a Christian, you had new life in you that will never end for you. It'll always be there. Christ in you, your hope of glory, will always be your glory, glorious hope. Now, as long as a woman had a husband, let's transfer it to another meeting. As long as a believer remains in sin. As long as a person remains a sinner. What is a sinner? Two ways you can find out. One, read the scriptures and you'll know what a sinner is. Two, you got a consciousness. It may be blurred by now. Your consciousness may have become very dull by now. But if you still have even a little bit of consciousness, it'll tell you right and wrong, good and bad, up and down. You'll have a consciousness of living in this earth. How can you get free of being a sinner? You've got to have a new life. You've got to have a new life. As long as you 
have any part of the old life continuing in you, there's no room for the new life. No room. As long as her husband lived, she was bound to him by law. But what did it take for her to be free from him it was very simple. He must die. Now, if you study the Apostle Paul in many other places, you will hear him talk about our death. So let me put it like this. A true Christian, I'm telling you what a Christian is, a true Christian is bound by his past, the law of life in his past, and it'll be there as long as he lives if he does not accept Jesus as his new life. Listen to me now. So what must happen for a person to accept Jesus as a new life? The Bible is clear. There must be a death. There must be a death. You must realize that to become a Christian, there has to be a death. You're not free. You're still under the law. You're still not in control of your own life. Satan has greater control to the average human. Humans think, well, I control myself. I can get by. I'm, I'm not a fool. I don't have to do what is preached by the church and what is preached by book writers and so forth. No, dear friend, if you're going to have the Christian life, which is Christ in you. There must be a death. You're going to have to die to the old things. You don't carry them around in your pocket the rest of your life just because you're a Christian. I deal a lot with alcoholics. And it's like they've got a, a bottle of liquor in their pocket even though they're going to church singing and shouting and praising the Lord. What's wrong with them? They're not dead to it yet. A true Christian is dead to his old life. He's dead to his old way of living. He is dead to anything that is contrary to what is written in this book. And he is finally dead to his old consciousness because a new consciousness of Christ living in him is taking hold. It's taken hold. Oh, he doesn't know at the moment he accepts Jesus. It'll take a little while, take a little time, but he's getting a new consciousness. So the verse says, she's loosed from the law of her dead husband. She can marry again. And my message out of that second verse is, you are loosed from your old life the moment there is a death. Whose death? Death to the old life. Death to the old way of living. Death to thinking I can do something within myself. Death to the idea that I'm still the same person and i got to live. No, sir. A person who is born again is not the same person anymore. Oh, they may have parts of the same personality. They may wiggle their nose and blink their eyes and do a few things that were common to them in their makeup. But listen, they are dead to their past. They are dead to their marriage of the law. I don't know how to explain that perfectly because it's such a huge subject. Because it bothers me that the average Christian is still trying to get his old life straightened out. He's just working hard on it. I knew a dear woman one time who had this idea 
of marrying alcoholic people. Like, she married one alcoholic, he died. She married the second alcoholic, he died. He married a, she married a third alcoholic, and he died. She married alcoholics because she thought she could change them. She thought she could get them out of alcohol. But it was not possible for her. Only God can save people by Jesus Christ and his work at Calvary. Only Jesus Christ can make a difference in a life because God puts Christ in you when you truly believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You are reborn. You're not going to keep the same old life. That's why it means to be born again. A born again person is one who has been delivered from the old life. They're free of it. They're ready to live a new life. But Christianity has fallen and failed in our generation especially because there's just so many things, so many things. Most, most of these things have become governmental. You're an alcoholic. It's okay if you drink just a little bit and run the government. That means at some point he's not in control. You think that two men can marry? Have positions? Have understanding that it's all right for them to do it? No hope there. That's a sad, sad thing that happened because some people that are Christian believe that. In fact, here in Dallas, Texas, we've got two or three Christian churches operated by homosexuals. They get the same Bible I do. They sing many of the same songs I do. They have blocked it in their mind and in their heart about what God has to say about life between two men, two women. I'm bringing these things to you because Christianity gets rid of the old life. It's where the old, old way of living. People come to me and say, well, we just can't help it. I, I'm, a, I'm a homosexual and I just can't help it. That's a lie. They've been lied to. There are hundreds of books written that are full of lies. You know what? If a homosexual is saved and born again, his old way of living is past. So whoever you are, with whatever problems are in your life, homosexual, alcohol, uh, dope fiend, whatever, when you are born again, when you are genuinely born again, you have another life put in you. The life put in you is not a drunkard. It's not one living on drugs. It's not one who messes up marriage by leaning to their flesh. Who is this one person put in you? It's your new life. It's Jesus Christ. That's why I have to talk about Jesus Christ because he is the only one that's ever straightened out alive. The only one. Nobody else has done it. Nobody else has the ability and power to straighten out lives. I want to tell you something. This most of all, Jesus Christ doesn't just straighten out a life once you accept him. But Jesus Christ straightened out every life, every human being that lived in sin. He straightened out their life at the cross. I'm not s sitting here telling you that all a person needs to do uh, to get right with God is to quit their sinning. I'm telling you that that's not the way you do it. That's not what happens. 
Jesus Christ died on the cross and in his body he carried the sin of humanity. All humanity. He carried their sin in his body. And when his body died, sin died. But you know what you must do? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to enter into that relationship with Christ and when you do he's not going to take out your old life and put it on a scrub board and straighten you out no sir that'll die that's got to die the old way of living has got to die and it will live if you see Christ coming in as your new life Paul would say the life I now live is Christ my time is up. Got to run. God love you. I'll be back this same place later. Bye-bye.